<clears throat> All right then. Well, I will crack on. I think so. Rob's not actually feeling tip top today, so he's not taking part. Although he has helped me prepare the slides. We've got some. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're going to run over just crew positions on board a standard boat. Um, you know, by standard boat, I mean a kind of you know around the forty foot mark, which requires anything from sort of seven to nine to ten, maybe ten people to sail. Um, and uh, yeah, because obviously there's hundreds of different types of boats which require all different sorts of crew. <clears throat> um, just to say, um, yeah, this is going to be recorded, and now that the quality of this should be going up a little bit, it should be much easier and quicker for me to edit and bang up online rather than spending a lot of time scratching my head. Okay, um, so yeah, I've got the chat. I've got everything open now, so I should be able to quickly respond to any questions. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, just, I think everyone on here has probably been on the rest, so I won't bother with the quick Zoom lessons on how to change things around. Um, and I'll skip through that as well. Where do we find them online? Uh, you missed Tuesday. Okay, so I am putting them up on my blog, on the website, um, which I will... Once we're kind of going in a second, I will put a link to it. Um, but they're on my, I've got a YouTube page, which is the London School of Sailing, uh, which they're on there, if you can find your way to that. But also there, um, I'm going to put a link to the slides and the kind of the details of them on a blog, which I'm trying to put up kind of a day after each one. But I'm falling behind. Um, so they will be there, though. So the, yeah, the program... So we're now up to the, no problem, we're, yeah, we're up to crew position. So we're actually going to try and run through all the crew positions in this session. Uh, if we don't make it, I might do, the next session might also be on crew positions. Okay, uh, and just, again, if anyone's interested, the, we're actually filling up on our online Zoom course quite quickly. So we've got four spots left on the day skipper and five on the yacht master. So yeah, so crew positions. This is obviously a boat which does not fit into our category of crew because... Some of the um, J classes, it's what this is. I think this might be like Hannah Man or something. They have sometimes 20 people on the foredeck. So when you're the head bowman, then you are the head of, you have your own herd of 20 people for getting those spinnakers down. So yeah, so from stem to stern, all the different positions. So we have the bow, who tends to be an acrobat, slightly sadistic, enjoys pain and getting cold. The tall mast, the pit, which is the, the pivot point of the boat. The pit is the... The coordinator, the most focused and uh, quick hands, all the rest of it. Okay, and then we have the trimmers. So trimmers, one being uh, probably grinding, one being the actual uh, sail shape trimmer, and also the main sheet trimmer as well. So we have three trimmers. Uh, the helm, the driver, and then we have tactics, so nerd one, and na navigation, nerd two. Okay, there are there is a difference between these two, so I'll come on to that. Um, so the bow. So when we say being an acrobat, on a lot of boats, you literally are an acrobat. So you can see in the top photo here, this is on, on a Volvo 65, that changing when you're changing sails, you know, if the wind is changing but you want to keep the same sail up, uh, you want to maybe change the sheeting angle. So if you haven't got a sheet attached, you've got to take a sheet to the sail and you're not going to just go and grab the sail and pull it in towards you so you've got to send the bow up to the clue of the sail with that new sheet to attach um, and then um, I've done this a couple of times sending a bowman to the end of the spinnaker pole to trip the spinnaker so they've come to the end here to jam their uh, jam the marlin spike in the shackle the talisker for the spinnaker to help blow the trip and you can see that the spinnaker is just blown out here and it's completely lost all of its power which will allow for a nice quick speedy drop. These are just two of the many things but basically the bow works at the pointy end, it's the wettest position, coldest position, most exposed, you're involved in all the sail changes, um, you normally shout a lot because you've got the wind and water in your ears so you think you can't be heard whereas actually the back of the boat can hear you but you also get shouted at the most because you can't hear anyone. Um, it's good to have a good power to weight ratio as a bowman um, and good balance, obviously. 
and also not mind getting bruised, pain, cold, falling, etc. Um, so it tends to be the youngest person on the boat or someone who's just generally bounces and doesn't mi- or doesn't mind it. Oh, there's a lot of padding. The mast. So the mast pulls ropes faster than other masts. The quicker the mast does their job, the quicker that your boat will start going faster than other boats, basically. Having a levered, levered mechanical advantage helps and it normally works with the bow and this video is brilliant. I'm just going to play this. This is how committed all, all masts should be. Still going. Still. Absolutely. They still managed to drop the spinnaker in the water because the person in the pit wasn't doing their job. I'm sorry if you can hear the cheesy music as well. Anyway, well, that's enough of that. Could you hear? Out of interest, I've not played a video before like this. Does, can you hear the mute, the sound as well? Yeah. Okay. That's good because we've got another one coming later. Um, so yeah, so the mast is basically pulling up that spinnaker as qu- or any sail as quick as possible, and the job of the pit, which we'll come on to, is to basically take in the slack of all the all the work that the mast is doing is for nothing if the pit isn't bringing in the slack, which is what was happening in that situation. Um, and so the pit is the you know in control of all oper- most almost every operation on the boat involves the pit. Um, any kind of change of sails, any uh, a lot of some some sail adjustments. If you're trimming your outhaul, perhaps, or the kicker, that normally comes down to the pit as well. Um, but particularly when it gets to the spinnaker situation. Okay, so always good to be organised as a pit. Any questions so far? No, I think we're all good. <clears throat> okay. The trimmers, so including the main sheet, uh, the trimmer's job is basically to keep the boat going as fast as possible and is to be in lo- lots of communication with the trimmers and the helm. Um, and this is what, you, as, as a trimmer, this is your view. Uh, mast, people on the mast should generally have sore necks because they're leaning back, just looking up at their sail the whole time. And they might be talking if you're, uh, sorry, not mast, main sheet. Uh, main sheet trimmers are looking up the sail the whole time, trimming the sail, whether it's on a winch or on a um, kind of dinghy style pulley system. And then they're talking to the other trimmers and the helm. And they all basically need to be talking to each other a lot to just make sure that the helm has good balance. And the trimmers will also be paying attention to the speed on the boat. Because if you once you've practiced together, you know what numbers the boat should be getting uh, for the wind strength and the wind angles. You should know what speed you should be going and if you're not hitting those speeds, you need to adjust your trim, perhaps move the car forwards or backwards, um, you know, adjusting the halide tensions, the Cunninghams, downhauls, outhauls, kickers, etc. Um, so, yeah, so all a kind of very, very good communication is key and often the weakest point. And from my experience, like, uh, in terms of sailing, most people are there kind of just like, oh, my God. You know, quickly do things quickly, but the key is to actually talk to each other. If you talk to each other a lot, it's much better, and you can always you learn a lot more from each other. And if you you know if you're that down grinding a sail in, you can't see it very well, so someone on the rail can see it, so they're calling the trim for you, for example. Um, yeah, so they you know, and they're basically if you suddenly need to duck, so if the navigator tactician says, right, we've got a boat on starboard, we're in port, we need to duck behind them. The main sheet is going to be the first to release the sail. So the main must release the sail, ease the main first, because you want to allow the power of the boat to move towards the front of the boat. Uh, this is a big thing we'll cover in a lot more detail. But the boat is a balance point, approximately approximately in the middle, normally just behind the mast. Um, and so if you have more power in your jib and less power in your main, the bow is going to get pulled downwind. Uh, if you have more power in the mainsail and less power in the jib, then you're going to head up into the wind. And basically by using that balance, that's how we help adjust for weather helm. And also if you want to do a really tight manoeuvre. So if you do need to quickly duck downwind to get behind the stern of a boat to avoid, if it's windy, the worst thing that can happen there is you get a gust of wind. The main sheet is too powered up and you broach and you then uncontrollably round up and that collision you 
try to avoid, you don't avoid. So, um, yeah, you've got to... That's, again, mm. the trimmers and main talking to, again, each other, as well as the helm there. And, yeah, and ideally, in the, in the ideal world, as a trimmer, you can nip from the rail down to the winch to ease a sail off, grind it back in, be back up on the rail again, all nice and quickly. Um, I realise it's it's always, you know, depending on the boat, how far you've got to go, etc. it's not always possible, especially if your life jacket goes and gets caught in the rail and then you're stuck there until someone unhooks you, things like that. So helm. Helm is, is often the skipper slash boss, but it's best normally if they're not. Uh, it's very hard as the skipper or the crew boss to discuss, you know, with the whole crew what the manoeuvres are, etc., what the plan is, if they're trying to focus on driving the boat. Then obviously they won't be driving the boat very well um, if they're talking to everyone the whole time. So, you know, in offshore racing and things like that, mm. you often say... I often make the rule of do not talk to the helm unless it's productive or feedback and the helm, you know, just certainly for the first sort of 20 minutes that they're on the helm just to help them get their eye in. And then once you kind of get the feel of things, maybe then, you know, start chatting away. But if you're just sitting at the helm chatting, you're not going to be doing a good job. And that is what makes the difference between being a competitive helm and a non-competitive and a kind of amateur helm. Um, mm -hmm. If you can steer in all conditions, obviously great. Sometimes you might have a, an upwind specialist and a downwind specialist helm on if you've got larger crew, uh, etc. But uh, if you, you know, if, again, round the cans race, you can do easily do probably a whole day on the helm. Whereas if you're going to go, because then at least you get to go to the pub at the end of the day. Whereas if you're going to go offshore racing, you want to be doing no more than I, you know a few couple of hours at a time max, uh, just so that you uh, don't overdo it. Um, any questions there? Where do you normally go, Rory? So I normally go these days. I, I don't know. I like being a little bit everywhere. Um, mm. I yeah. I don't. I don't. Mm. I go. I suppose. Um, I I, I tend mean, to be in what's coming next, really. So the nav and tactics right. uh, is where I tend to be these days. Um, and so as a navigator or tactician, or so if you've got the, if you can have both, great. So the navigator is looking big picture. They're looking right. This is the course. This is the wind. And this is the race course and where the tide is best or favorable, etc. This is where we would like to put ourselves. Um, <laughs> um, and and then the tactician is the, you know, getting around around the mark roundings. It's like, right, okay, we're getting into this situation. There's a boat here. There's a boat there. In 30 seconds time, they're going to be calling windward, leeward, starboard, whatever on us. Or we can, if we put ourselves in this position, that's when we'll be able to get, you know, water around that mark, etc. So the, the difference, navigator is how to get around the course as fast as possible. Tactician is how to screw everyone else over and not get screwed over, uh, ideally. And the um, <laughs> next is saying, yeah, so pairing the main and the helm. So the main and the helm should always be kind of, per, you know, when you say paired together, often if you're talking about having a watch system, so going on to offshore racing, uh, the, <clears throat> the helm uh, and main positions may swap over. So if you're, Maybe you helm for one watch and then you go off watch and then you come back on and you're on main. That's not quite how it would work. But um, if you're if you know two positions very well, mm -hmm. it's always good to know what your opposite position is. So for example, mast, bow, and pit are all positions that work quite well together. So if you can do those three positions, if you can do pit and mast or pit and bow, then you're going to be much better for it uh, because you understand what the other person is going through. And so you can think, you can just basically, you need to use less words because you're just, you're in the same headspace. Um, oh, sorry, them's over the days. So yeah, so, but the nav and tactics. So yeah, basically the, the geeks of the boat who enjoy making, you know, looking at the bigger picture things and the rules, um, going as fast as possible around the race course, making decisions on the wind and current. If you, these days, most people, you are having an iPad or, you know, a tablet with, the, the stuff in front of you is great. If you're going for the offshore race boats, uh, the navigation stations on the, like the Volvo Ocean race boats or the Ocean race boats now, 
uh, for example, are fantastic. You've got two or three screens, you've got all the instruments available to you, you've got weather routing software, and on the whole, the uh, on the offshore, the tactician navigators are rarely seen. Uh, you can always tell them because they come up and they're like, oh, daylight. Um, <laughs> and uh, back in the days, they were the ones on the sextants. And so I, for me, myself, going back to the question of what I like... I like to be ideally a combination, you know, most of the time when I'm racing on a, like, for example, a first 40 or a Sigma 38, you don't have a navigator and a tactics. But what I will try and do is I'll probably do those, I'll probably do those jobs, really, unless someone else wants to. And I just tend to verbally diarrhea all of the thoughts that come into my head so that everyone can understand the thought process I'm going through. Uh, and then mm -hmm. also be the kind of the crew boss, like by, by being the boss. You're not doing any one position, but you're kind of overseeing the operation. So it's like, right, you know, we're on this tack now for about two minutes. So let's get the spinnaker plugged in on the bow, uh, et cetera, for the bowman. And then, right, the next maneuver, we're going to bear away. We're going to chuck a jibe in. Then we're going to get, you know, we're going to do a, a jibe set. So we're going to be jibing before we hoist the pole on the spinnaker. Um, or if it's just going to be a starboard pole, bear away, hoisting on the rounding, things like that. Just talking to the crew so that everyone kind of knows roughly what's going on, uh, even if they don't fully understand it. Mm. Um, so we've got a little video. Are there any more questions? I've just got a little video which basically shows it's a TP-52, Rob found it, and it just shows basically you've got on a TP-52, I think they've got about eight crew. Um, so you've got behind, below the camera, this, this camera is on the end of the boom, so I think you cannot see the nav tactician. You can see the helm, you've got, um, the main sheet, the trimmers, the pit, uh, the mast, and the um, bow. There isn't really a mast on this boat, on these boats, because they've got a coffee grinder, uh, the pedestals. So a pedestal is more efficient than a mast. Um, a mast, uh, and they've also got some really clever systems for the hoisting and dropping of these spinnakers. So it just shows you, and I'll just flick through it. I'll jump through it a bit. Um, so you can see, just so you've got your mast. Mast standing up here, ready to jump to the bow should they need to uh, by the shrouds, but otherwise staying out of the way of the helm. Uh, they're just kind of everyone's lining up for the start at the moment. And so you've got one of the, the trimmers is here, ready on the coffee grinder, ready to trim that jib in should they need to suddenly head up, etc. Okay, you've got the other trimmer down to leeward, just on the actual winch. They don't have the sheet ever locked on the winch, it's in their hand, ready to release or grind on whatever they fancy. Um, Someone down in the bottom of the picture is probably doing the main sheet. You've got two people on the rail just you know, doing what they can do best at the moment, which is make the boat go fast. Um, I don't know if you can hear that you've got the tactician calling the time to the start line. But if I turn it up, it makes a difference to you. But they're basically just saying that at the moment we're early. You know, they're just doing it every five seconds, every ten seconds. Just doing a, this is the time to the line and we're early. This is the time to the line, we're still early. Okay, and now they've... So the line is now ahead of them. The committee boat is just off to the starboard of the picture, I believe. I always amazed at the angle they get, the show angle they get their jibs into. Um, they then say uh, two quick tacks, I think. So they, they're too early for the start line, so they want to slow down. So they're going to do two very quick tacks, and in that time, they're going to gain height. So they're going to move towards the windward end of the line, which is good. And they're also going to slow the boat down. Um, and they could only do that because there was room upwind of them there. Okay, but you can just see, just if there's a position on the boat that you often fill, try and find that person and keep an eye on what they're doing. Okay, and now I think they're basically. So like now we're racing, he said, I think. 15 seconds. And they're basically trying to go. <laughs> So you can see the boats up ahead of them are too early, they're having to do massive ducks downwind. Uh, they're doing a bit of a duck downwind. This is their big acceleration phase, so they bear off. They've got the room to bear off, there wasn't the boat to go with them. This is where it gets very exciting. And they've gained loads of speed by doing that duck downwind and now the acceleration to give them a little slingshot effect upwind. Wow. And they do quite a fun manoeuvre here, so I'm guessing what you can't see is they've got boats upwind of them. So they're attacking on the port to duck 
behind the other boat, so you've got the trimmers ready. So you'll notice the boom's going to move out, so the boom's been dropped a bit there. And they're having to duck Quantum, which is the zebra sails there. And so heading for the stern of the boat, and they obviously don't want to lose unnecessary distance, that would make you absolutely break yourself. I'm guessing they know how long those boats are. Okay. Um, got to go fast here, so they've got a boat upwind of them here, so they're just saying we need to go fast because at the moment they have clean air to windward of them, but if that boat upwind of them accelerates much more than them, then they're going to be in the dirty wind of it. And again, everyone's on the rail, you've just got the trimmer up it. Okay, so let's jump forward a bit, let's go forward. The mark roundings are always fun. long upwind leg here we go. So I'm just gonna jump up. So just notice how quick and slick their tacks are. When they say he says ready to tack, three, two, one, tacking is generally what they do. And see so they're on the right So they have a quick reaching leg here, so now they're, they've gone from their beat and now they're on to a quick close reach across to a, a spreader mark. They used to have that as the, the windward mark and then you get your spinnaker up and go down with it, but because these boats are absolutely mental, they decided to spread them out a bit because they kept crashing into each other and doing those damage. Um, so that's the reason for it. So now you've got the bowman is up on the bow there, plugging the spinnaker in, making sure it's ready to go. The four deck assistant guy is just helping pull the spinnaker out of the chute, out, out of the hatch there, so that it's ready. To, it's going to go up smoothly. Um, and they've got these amazing like wind systems down below deck, which get these spinnakers up really quickly. You've got two guys ready on the grinder, so that would be your mast and your pit, the equivalent of the mast and the pit there, ready on the grinder, and then they're going. goes their spinnaker and fill and down comes the jig straight in the same motion beautifully done or oh, almost using the camera to the spinnaker sheet so I'm going over the time a bit now okay so now that's all good and so again anyone who can be is on the rail anyone who's not doing anything is just sitting down out the way Bowman's just sorting the jib out to get that fully away. Oh, we're also getting out a stay sail. Get a bit of extra stay there, and why not? Okay, I'm going to find a jive. So hopefully we're going to set up for a jive shortly. Asymmetric, which is very nice in comparison. There we go, we that. Wasn't, wasn't perfect, wasn't, wasn't bad. And then, so they fouled the jib, the little stay sail thing they've got up for. It's more of a code. Spinnaker drop. I, I, once we get to the drop, I'll, I'll stop it there. Down. Got, I'll send you the link. To as well. So coming up to Lewin Mark. About us. It's ten. So the jib's out. So that was a, almost a kiwi drop, so they, they did a, a drop jibe, so that if the spinnaker was coming down slowly, like a normal speed boat would get it down, the spinnaker would have been falling onto the jib now, 
uh, so it's a Kiwi drop, which is quite nice. But they've got this um, winch system that you've got an accelerator, so you keep pulling the accelerator and it speeds up the speed that this winch down below spins, and that's what sucks the spinnaker down really damn quickly, so they get it down in about two and a half seconds. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy Thursday, happy Easter.